Hi everyone. Uh, today I was going to try to cover a subject that uh, you don't see talked about very much, and that's UI automation. Um, specifically, I was going to look at how we can use UI automation to interact and work with the navigation pane in uh, Microsoft Access. Just to show you a little bit about what it is, how it can be used, and um, yeah, let's dive in. So what exactly is UI automation? Well, as its name implies, it's the user interface automation. So you can use this client library to interact physically with the graphical interface. So this is actually a library, and it's not just used in, uh, in VBA, it's used in several other languages. And you can use it for setting up test scenarios and automating different processes and tasks. So like today, what I'm going to be trying to show you a little bit about is how we can actually use it to simulate clicking of buttons, uh, simulate entering data into uh, boxes and things like that in certain elements of the graphical interface that otherwise might not be accessible or can be very complicated. Well, through UI automation, uh, these all become relatively simple to access and interact with. So I do have a web page that I recently published on the subject. And as you'll see, I've previously touched upon it, but I've never really gone into much detail, certainly not made a YouTube video um, of what we can use it for, how it can be used. Um, and this one, I get a little bit more detail into it. And as you're going to see, we're going to look at toggling the navigation pane expanding it or shrinking it and you'll see why the difference why there's two items here and then how we can actually perform a search in the navigation pane or clear an existing search as i mentioned here i'm going to use self-healing object variables just to optimize my code get the best performance i can and uh for my use in my examples, I'm now using these two functions as helper functions just to simplify coding a bit instead of always having to put these dims and these statements in every other function. It's just easier to have them as separate reusable functions that I just call when I need them. Um, you'll also notice if ever you decide not to use self-healing object variables, I left here commented out, but there's still here the, the dims and the sets that you could just uncomment and use as is and then you don't need to use the self-healing variable if you choose not to do so and then we just dive right into it so instead of looking at the web page let's just go straight into access here so i have a very simple sample database and if we go straight into the vba you'll see i have two modules now the first module uia has the self-healing object variable and then my two helper functions, and that's it. And then I have a separate module for the nav pane, all of the functions and procedures and whatnot that we're now going to go over. We're going to start with the simplest one, which is the toggle. And if we just briefly look at the code and then we'll see what it actually does. What I'm doing here is I'm telling it, go and find the graphical interface associated with the handle for access for this access application so i'm telling it go find me basically access as long as we get returned an instance of access then i come down here and i say okay within access because i'm passing it the access instance that we just found i'm saying go find me the shutter bar open and close button and if it finds that button, because there are cases where it won't, if the navigation pane isn't being displayed, it won't. So if it does, then it keeps going. If it doesn't, it just exits, it's done. But if the shutter button is available, I'm choosing to set focus on it. And then I'm invoking its command. Basically, I'm clicking the button. I'm invoking the shutter button action. And that's what's going to toggle it. So if I just quickly send this over here and send this one over there, okay, we can simply run it. 
So as you can see, if you look at the navigation pane over here, it's currently visible. If we run the toggle, it just closes, it shrinks down. And if we run it again, it's going to expand. So that's all the toggle does. And the issue with the toggle is the fact that you have no way of saying, you know, I want it maximized or I want it minimized. I want it expanded or shrunk. It's just going to toggle from whatever the current state is. So although the toggle, it's interesting and it demonstrates what the UI automation client can do for us, realistically, it isn't going to be that helpful. And that's where I came up with the second function, and that's the nav pane expand. And the nav pane expand is very similar, generally speaking. Let's just take a look at the code for a second. Um, but it has an input argument, which is, do you want it expanded or not? So if it's true, I want to see my nav pane expanded. If it's false, then I want it shrunk. I want it minimized. And what it does, same thing, it's trying to bind to access. And if it does, then instead we're going to go find the nav pane. Why? Because I need to first to de determine the dimensions of the nav pane. I need to determine, is it minimized or is it maximized currently? So first I go get the nav pane and then I get its rectangular dimensions. I go get the second element in the array, which will be the width. And then I check quite simply, if I've told it to be expanded, well, if it's inferior to 42, well, then it's not expanded. So I got to expand it. And inversely, if I say it's, I want it shrunk, well, then I'm checking, is it greater than 42? Because if it's smaller than 42, then it's already shrunk. So it's just a little bit of logic to know, do I need to actually run the toggle? And then we're doing the same thing as before. We go find the button and we toggle it. Only though, depending on the, do we want it expanded or not? So if we run this, now you're going to see, right? I want it expanded. Yes. There it is expanded. Well, I can run it again, right? Nothing's going to change. Compared to the toggle, the toggle would have shrunk it. It would have just okay, you want the other state. But here we're able to tell it truly, this is the state I want. And similarly, you can do false. I want it shrunk. There you go. And you can run this as many times as you want. It's not going to toggle it. It really is looking for the state that you want. Let's look at the other aspect of the nav pane, which was the search bar. Can we automate searching? You know, when you've got lots of elements, perhaps you want to have some type of easy button that will restrict it down to a minimum amount of objects. Well, it's very easy to do. And um, we just come down to the nav pane search. And as its name implies, we're going to perform a search. So how does it work? It's the exact same general idea. We're going to find access, but this time we're going to find the search element. Once we have the search element, then we're going to enter the term, which is what we supply up here, the search term, and it's going to filter automatically. So if we try this out, you'll see we'll do a search term and let's find something. Let's say nav. Well, if we do that, there you go. My objects have been filtered. You could do a search UI. There you go. So with this now, you can perform any search you want. Because now I'm entering information in, I also wanted to be able to find a way to clear the search bar. Once again, oh, if we just look at the UI for a second, we know there's a button for that. So it's the exact same thing. Let's find access, then let's find that button, the clear search string button. And if it's found, then let's invoke its action. Let's press it, let's clear, clear the search bar. So once again, we come here and we just simply run it and it's cleared. So you now have 
very simply four easy procedures to toggle or control the expand and shrinking of the navbar. You can now perform a search and you can clear searches. So I hope this helps a little bit and I hope you start understanding that we actually have this library. Let's look at one thing, however. You know by now, I'm big on uh, late binding. And that's also why most of my code always includes early late binding switch where you guys can control it. We get the early binding for developing code, but when we're going to deploy it, we flip it over to late binding. However, and it's in my article, let's go down to the article for two seconds. Um, right here, sorry. Um, I recent I was trying to create late binding, and I just couldn't get it to work. So I reached out to uh, Shane Groff of the Access Dev team, and he was kind enough to uh, enlighten me. And he simply explained that it's not possible to do any form of late binding with the uh, UI automation client because it doesn't support the I dispatch interface. So long story short. That's why in my code, you won't see the late binding. It's not possible. Because of that, that means that we have to have a reference. So you have to first come in references and you have to have set here the UI automation client. So as long as you do that, then the code runs. So as you've seen, with the UI automation client library, we're able to directly interact with the interface. We're able to access buttons, like objects. There's very little we can't do. What I will say, the, the be careful with, is as I've done some testing, trying to do some other functionalities, I don't know if it's a limitation in access, in limitation in VBA, if it's something that was specifically decided by by development teams, but I've noticed that not all the property and methods um, work in all the cases. So whereas you may be able to do something with one button, you may not be able to do with another because that hasn't been exposed. We haven't been given access to that capability. So there are certain limitations, and sadly, I haven't found any documentation on any of this. Uh, it really is a trial and error. You explore, you try things, and you see what works and what doesn't work. But as a general sense, you can automate a lot, and especially when you get into your own forms and things like that, you can really use this to do automated testing, and even data entry and things like that. Um, obviously, there are other ways, um, but for interacting with the graphical interface itself, the ribbon, the nav bar, things like that, this really is a powerful tool that I don't think gets enough attention. And um, hopefully I'll be doing some more videos. We'll explore perhaps the ribbon in the next one, how we can access different commands and different uh, tabs and things like that. Uh, perhaps I'll explore using it to uh, get into the file menu itself because that one's a little different than a standard ribbon, uh, getting access perhaps to the account information, things like that. We'll see. I have to see uh, what time I have available to me to develop some of this course material. But, you know, th this is an interesting uh, library that I think deserves a little bit more attention in the future. Um, so all of this to say that uh, to be continued. Um, I would like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Per usual, if you wouldn't mind, you know, give me a thumbs up, subscribing, leave me comments, let me know what you'd like explored. Is this a library that you'd like me to spend some more time on? Or would you like me to be exploring other aspects? Uh, do you prefer me going back to basics, you know, covering just general, how do we do this in Access? How do we create a form, the different controls, reports, things like that? Or do you prefer these more advanced uh, videos exploring things that, well, seriously, information is not truly available online and certainly not concrete demos and examples fully elaborated like this. Um, let me know, guys. Leave me a comment. 
Uh, if you can share this and promote this in your networks and online, uh, I'd be greatly appreciative. Thank you very much and have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.